Dan Smith of Thomas Was Alone fame comes back in style and elegance on the Nintendo Switch. The Spectrum Retreat takes place in a seemingly futuristic hotel whose mystery is resolved early on into the game via blue cubes that divulge hotel employee logs of the actual purpose of the retreat, assimilation coded in VR. Each floor of the hotel 1 through 5 requires you to find a door with a keypad positioned next to it. Once located, the female voice helping you progress through the story will ask you to look for something strange in the vicinity of that door. Upon finding that, she'll point you to somewhere else in the hotel, invariably a room previously off limits and situated on the first floor. This newly opened area, for example the ballroom, has an incredibly easy puzzle to solve which gives the numerical four digit code for the keypad back on the floor you left. So it's time to head back upstairs via the elevator and enter the key code. Movement throughout the game is slow as you guide your character throughout the hotel and puzzle levels with the left analog stick, but smooth and done to keep the feel of the hotel surreal and ethereal in equal measure. A floating feeling adds to the elegance of the 1920s and 30s, opulence of the art decoration and the art deco furniture. The true purpose of the hotel is shrouded in a mystery that is slowly opened up via reading medical bills, memos, loan requests, medical insurance invoices, newspaper snippets and memories that point to a life changing event that involve a boy named Robin. Well I say mystery but it's pretty evident what's going on from the first few memos you've read. And as you progress further through the story, the hotel's sentient inhabitants become far more aware that your behaviour is something that requires monitoring, and paranoia and doubt creep into your perceived goals along with the falling apart of reality. Anyway, successfully opening the keypad bar door leads the main character through to the bulk of the game, Colour Puzzle Mania. Anyone familiar with the Wii U game Cube will be right at home here. Your data pad, your cell phone, is capable of collecting and storing a single colour. At the start of each level you'll be resigned to white. Targeting the on-screen cursor by looking around with the R analog stick is a slightly twitchy affair that is bettered by turning down the sensitivity which in turn slows down your turning speed. But then pointing that at a coloured block it's possible to capture that colour by pressing the ZR shoulder button. This will snap between the two colours on offer so a blue block will turn white and your data pad will turn blue. The game starts off nice and easy and quickly builds to a maximum of four colours to jump between white, red, green and blue. Whilst holding a particular colour, the corresponding translucent hued doorway now becomes accessible for transit. You shall pass! So manipulating the colours around a level, you'll be timed and progressing through the level to the end doorway to progress onto the next colour conundrum. There are between 8 and 10 puzzle levels on each floor and whilst floor 2, the first of the puzzle rooms, is based on learning the mechanics of colour swapping, the subsequent floors introduce new mechanics and ramp up the level of difficulty. Not quite to brainstorming intensity, but the sheer length of later levels may well test your resolve. It's all too easy to end up in a situation where you cannot progress any further and can't retreat. Just like painting yourself into a corner. The only exit then is to reset and start the entire level once again. Floor 3 introduces the use of the ZL shoulder button. This ZL button press combined with the new circle pads allows your character to teleport jump all the way to that circle pad as long as the colour you're holding corresponds to the colour in the middle of the circle pad. Floor 4 introduces yet another mechanic. By pressing floor and wall mounted panels the centre of gravity changes and you'll be walking on walls, ceilings, well pretty much everywhere. Couple all this gravity defying stuff with the teleportation pad and colour swapping and the game gets very complex indeed. When you reach the later levels and floors, especially upon reaching the fifth floor, where you'll then need to utilise everything that you've learned so far and put your skills to the test in a sprawling level based on an underground and its six stations. A single slip up here can result in having to redo the entire sprawling complex. Puzzles throughout the game are never too difficult, but with some puzzles reliance on trial and error and some with well hidden pathways, the repetition of long segments upon being trapped or falling to death 
the game feels less like a delight and more like a chore towards its conclusion. At least the extreme use of a single blip of rumble while changing colour will keep you awake. <laughs> so intense. A nice tense atmosphere pervades the Spectrum Retreats Hotel, and one or two moments of story-driven anxiety push you to want to complete the game, even if the story is a little simplistic, which should be expected of a five-hour playthrough. The sense of paranoia whilst in the hotel sections is amplified by a great discord and jarring noises and the HAL-inspired sentient butlers. It's a shame that during the puzzle rooms the music is instantly forgettable and the sound effects are merely functional. The only thing really holding you back will be the level of difficulty in the colour-coded puzzle rooms, which become overly long, elaborate and require some trial and error at times to plough through. This game is a nice distraction, but not going to be winning any Game of the Year awards. So Spectrum Retreat is a worthy distraction for puzzle gamers with well thought out puzzles, bar a few, and doesn't overstay its welcome. I think you'll be safe to drop by and spend a night at the Spectrum Retreat.